So good evening all. Um, yesterday we have uh, dealt with mail deleting, and then now today we are completely uh, shifting towards a new concept. Right. Um, the concept name is the components of variance. This is uh, a very brief introduction about the what are the different types of variances, and then what are the different types of populations in plan bidding, etc. Okay. It will be a very uh, brief lecture. So let us start. We all know that uh, in plan bidding, uh, there are two uh, terms which we hear very frequently. One is your phenotype, and then the next is your genotype. So can anyone tell me uh, who has coined these two terms, phenotype and then genotype? The Johan scientist. Johansson. Johansson. Yeah, it is a scientist named Johansson. Okay. So. What do you actually mean by phenotype and what do you actually mean by genotype? So how you understand what is phenotype? Phenotype means physical appearance. Okay. And then what about uh, genotype? The genetic appearance? Genetic constitutions of allele. Okay. Genetic constitution of an allele. Sorry, gene. Okay. So... It dives into the molecular or a genetic constitution and then phenotype is nothing but how the plant looks in terms of your physicalness. So we all know that uh, um, all uh, do all the plants look same in the field every time? No, sir. So we know that all the plants do not look same, right? So if they do not uh, look same, there is something which is causing your variability, right? There is some variance. So that variance, we assign it to the phenotypic variability. And we also know the equation that phenotype depends on genotype and then environment. So phenotype is controlled by both genotype as well as your environment. So whenever you see the variability in the phenotype, it is not only due to the genotype, but is also due to the environment, right? So whatever the variability that you see in the field or in a plant in its physical appearance, the underlying thing is first is your genotypic variability. And then the second thing is your environmental variability. Is it okay? The phenotype is equal to genotype plus environment or should I add anything here other than genotype and environment? Any proposals to add? I In say phenotype between genotype and environment. What what? Interaction of genotype and environment. Okay. So interaction between genotype and environment also constitutes the variability in the phenotype, right? Okay. So uh, this is a uh, very high class concept. Up to now, just understand that whatever the variability that we see in the physical terms of plant, that is your phenotypic variability, depends on the variability within the genotypes as well as variability where they are growing in a particular environment. So your phenotypic variability is equal to genotypic variability plus environmental variability. So now we saw the first component of variance that is your phenotypic variability. So let us go to the genotypic variability. So genotypic variability. And then within the genotypic variability, now we will see what are the uh, different variances which are responsible for the genotypic variability. So one is your additive variance. Second is your dominance variance. And then third is your epistatic variance. So can anyone define what do you mean by additive variance in very simple terms? What is additive variance? Anyone? Additive variance. Okay. So additive variance is uh, in very simple definition, it is nothing but your average effects of a gene. Okay. Hmm. 
just remember whenever you see the phrase average effect of a gene they are referring towards the additiveness right so average effect of a gene is nothing but your additive variance okay and then not only of a gene when you um, consider all the segregating loci in the plant so how many let us consider up to n so average effects of all the segregating loci represents your additive variance and then the name itself indicates that if there is an additivity in the plant there is absence of dominance is this statement clear whenever there is an additivity you will not see the dominant variance only you will see the additive variance if there is complete additivity right and then the second point is additive variance is associated with the homozygosity why can anyone say are you getting am i audible hello audible sir okay so what i was trying to say is phenotypic variability is equal to genotypic variability plus environmental variability so we have completed the first component of variance and then when we enter into the second component of variance so let me make you more clear so the genotypic variability now we have um, one two three ones one is your additive variance then followed by your dominance variance and then by means of your epistatic variance so in simple terms additive variance what it refers to is it is nothing but your average effect of a gene of a gene or it might be genes throughout all the segregating loci okay just remember this and then all the time additive variance is associated with the homozygosity this is the second point you need to remember first point is average effect of a gene second point is it is associated with your homozygosity and then third point is this additive variance is responsible for calculating your narrow sense heritability okay you just need to uh, remember these three important points average effect of a gene additive variance is associated with the homozygosity and then it is useful for calculating the narrow sense heritability and there is uh, one most important point that additive variance is also directly related to the gca effect just remember this you will um, later study what do you mean by gca effect and then uh, how you will calculate the narrow sense heritability in your higher classes okay so just four points point number 1 additive variance is nothing but the average effect of a gene point number 2 it is uh, associated with the homozygosity and it it is helpful in calculating the narrow sense heritability and fourth point it is uh, directly related to the gca effect okay so in simple terms if i want to explain what do you mean by the average effect of a gene is so let us consider there is a gene a which has two alleles capital a and then small a so if the contribution of the capital a is 10 and then if the contribution of the small a is 5 so what will be the uh, complete effect of that gene if these two are acting additive 15 yeah so 15. simple that's it okay it's very simple it it is nothing but your additivity okay so you will just add together that's it that is your additive variance and then now we will deal about the dominance variance so dominance variance how they uh, refer to it as it is nothing but your deviation from the additivity so whenever you uh, deviate it from the additivity that is nothing but your dominance variance so let us take this simple example so same gene with a with two alleles 10 and then 
what will be the ultimate effect let us consider the uh, capital one as dominant so, so what 10. will be the alt 10 right so you are deviating it from the additivity so that is nothing but your dominance variance so this dominance variance it is mostly um, associated with your heterozygosity right heterozygosity is the one which gives you the dominant uh, gene action right yes sir okay and then this uh, dominance variance along with the this dominance variance along with the additive variance both together these are very helpful in cal calculating your heritability okay broad sense heritability both together you need to take both the dominance variance as well as your additive variance and then dominance variance is uh, mostly useful in calculating the SCA effects. So, um, it is just like a difference between these two. So, whatever um, it deviates from the additivity, it is uh, falling into the dominance variance and then the dominance variance is associated with the heterozygosity. So, it is the main uh, part which is used to calculate the heritability in the broad sense along with your additive variance. Okay. And then, um, it is uh, also important for calculating your SCFX. So these are the major differences between the additive variance and then dominance variance. Now there is one important uh, um, point just to note down. So additive variance and dominance variance. Among these two, this is the variance which is fixable and then dominance variance is the variance which is not fixable. Just up to now, remember this, uh, how additive variance is fixable and why the dominance variance is not fixable once you get into your masters um, they'll try to explain it in a very detailed way up to now just remember additive variance is always fixable uh, fixable so let me try to reproduce it is nothing but if it is 15 in the first generation and then even if you go for the next generation it will be again 15 even in the next generation it is again 15 so this is a reason why it is fixable it is just a brief explanation but this is not the actual explanation just remember up to now whereas in case of your dominance variance if it is 10 in the next generation it will not be 10 it will be something x and then in the next generation it will be something y so it goes on but it is not in the case of additive variance where from one generation to other generation it does not change so that is the reason why additive variance is fixable whereas your dominance variance is not fixable it changes from one generation to other generation. Okay. And yes. then the third type is your epistatic variance. So what do you mean by epistasis? Any idea? Interaction between the genes. Interaction between the genes. Okay, so how many different types of epistasis are there? Six. Mm -hmm. Okay, which uh, epistasis give you the ratio of nine is to six? Complementary. Okay, and then what is the test cross ratio of that complementary? Did the gene interaction class complete it? Yes, sir. Okay. So we all know there are uh, six different types of epistasis. Sir? Yeah? Sir, it would be nine is to seven, right? Hmm. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. What is the test cross ratio of that complementary epistasis? The one is to three. One is to three. 
So you also need to remember the test process of all the different types of uh, epistasis, okay? Compared to the normal ratios, test cross ratios are uh, uh, most um, important one. So coming to epistatic variance, so whatever uh, variance that we see due to interallelic interaction, okay? Those types of uh, variances, they are fallen into the um, epistatic variance. So we have uh, just saw additive variance and then dominance variance. So within these two variances, we are just dealing about a part of a gene. Which is, so what type of interaction it is within the gene? What do you call that? Intraallelic. Intraallelic. So intra means within. Intra gene. Okay, within the gene, you are uh, trying to see the variance. But when you come to the epistatic variance, it is um, nothing but the variance that is due to your interallelic interaction, which means between the genes. Okay, let us consider this is one gene, this is one gene, and then this is one gene. So this is the condition. So the variance which results due to the interallelic interaction is nothing but your epistatic variance. So under epistatic variance, totally there are um, again classified into three types. One is your additive into additive. Second is your additive into dominance. And then third is your dominance into dominance. So Additive into additive is nothing but there are two genes which both are behaving in additive fashion but there is an interaction between these two. Okay. And then in the second type one gene is behaving additively and then the second gene it is behaving dominant. Whereas in case of third type both the genes are dominant and there is an interaction between these two. So ultimately there are two more than two genes, two or more than two genes. And then the, there is an interaction between these two. And then whatever the variation that they create, it gets fold into epistatic variance. So I told you that additive variance is fixable and dominance variance is not fixable. So based on this, among these three types, subclasses, which um, interaction variation is fixable? And which is not fixable? Additive First into additive is fixable. fixable. Okay, additive into additive is only the fixable variance. So totally, how many variants are there which are fixable? Two. One is your additive variance. Yes, from the additive into additive. And then the next component is your additive into additive. Both these variances are fixable. Just remember this. This is very important okay it's very simple we just saw that phenotypic variability is uh, divided into genotypic variability and environmental variability and then in the uh, genotypic variability we dealt about the additive variability and then dominant variance additive variance and dominance variance so definition is more important just remember whenever you see the average effect of a gene it is your additive variance so whenever there is a deviation from the average effect, it is your dominance variance. So additive variance, it is associated with the homozygosity, dominance variance with your heterozygosity. And then which type of uh, heritability can be calculated? That is important. And then it represents the GCA effect. And then this represents your SCA effect. And the next most important one is among these two, which is fixable. Okay, and then coming to your epistatic uh, variance. So this is your uh, uh, intraallelic interaction. Whereas in case of your epistatic variance, it is your interallelic interaction. Again, it is classified into additive into additive, additive into dominance, and then dominance into dominance. So among all the variances, additive variance and additive into additive variance are fixable in nature. Right? So is it okay? Yes, sir. And then if you want to exploit heterosis, which variance you want more? Dominance. So dominance. Why it is associated with? Heterozygosity. Heterozygosity. Okay.
So I hope now you are uh, clear with phenotypic variability and then the next component, the genotypic variability. So what about your environmental variability? So how you will uh, define the environmental variability? So it's very simple. So um, whatever the variation that are present in different environmental conditions, that gives your environmental variability. That's it, okay? So most people also call this as your error variance. So which is not due to the genotypic effects. So whatever the uh, plant has, so ultimately what expresses your gene expresses and then it results to your phenotype, right? And then there sometimes there will be G into interaction, which is also uh, important for your phenotypic expression. But this E is the one which is not um, inherited from one generation to other generation, which is the one uh, gets inherited. Only the genes of your plant gets inherited. Okay. That is the reason why the environmental variability is also known as your error variance. So we won't consider it. Okay, just remember up to this point, phenotypic variability, genotypic variability, and environmental variability. And the most important thing is how the genotypic variability has been um, classified. Okay. And then now uh, let us see uh, the different authors who has uh, classified this uh, genotypic variance. So the genotypic variability. Fisher was a scientist in 1918. The year is very important. Okay, just remember the year. In 1918, Fisher was the uh, first scientist who classified the genotypic variability or your genetic variance in simple terms into uh, three different types. One is your additive variance, dominance variance, and epistatic variance. That we saw clearly. Uh, few slides back and then right in 1935 he classified the uh, genotypic variability into two types one is your additive next is your non-additive so in case of non-additive it is again classified into dominance variance and then epistatic variance and then Mather is the another scientist in 1949 who has classified again into two different types one is your heritable and fixable, heritable and non-fixable. So now I have clearly dealt about which is heritable uh, and then which is fixable. So tell me among additive variants, dominance variants and environmental, uh, sorry, epistatic variants. So which is the one um, heritable? All are heritable. All three. Why? Because, hmm. because because sir, it is genetic sir yeah genes everything type. is controlled by your genes sir. genotype right so that is the reason why all the three variances are heritable but there are two variances which are fixable that we discussed that is your additive variance followed by additive into additive interactional variance so, heritable and then fixable, it is your additive variance and then additive into additive variance, which is a part of your epistatic variance. And then heritable and non-fixable will be your dominance variance and then followed by additive into dominance, comma dominance into dominance. Right? So, this is important classification. Okay, Mather in 1949. Just remember, all the three types of uh, your variances are heritable because these are under uh, the control of your genotype. But there are only two variances which are fixable, additive variance and then additive into additive. And all the remaining variances are heritable, but they are not fixable. Right, is it okay? Yes. Okay. So this is just uh, um, the components of variance. Uh, with this, we finish the components of variance. And then now um, I'll try to explain you the other uh, concept that is your um, breeding population. So we all know that 
there are um how many types of uh, pollinations are there in plant systems three types okay what are they self cross and open cross self cross and open cross okay so do read the examples of open cross okay this is the most important uh, um, thing in terms of exam point of view so give me an example of a open cross where it is an uh, drought tolerant plant sorghum okay sorghum mm -hmm. and then a pulse which is open cross pigeon pulse. p red gram okay pigeon p and then uh, a plant which is used for your uh, jaggery production sugarcane sugarcane uh, okay so there are many examples just do um, read about it so i'll just say one crop this under which category it falls self cross or open cross which category rye okay so just see uh, rye falls under which category and then next is your indian mustard okay just study about these two under which category um, they fall sell for cross or open cross so we all know that um, broadly saying there are three different types of uh, crops or plants one is your self pollinated cross pollinated and then asexually propagated so did the modes of reproduction class got finished yes sir yes sir okay so then it is okay so broadly classifying first is your self pollinated followed by cross pollinated and then asexually propagated and then coming to the breeding populations there are uh, four different types one is your homogeneous population and then heterogeneous population these two are together and then uh, homozygous population and then heterozygous population whereas these two are together so can anyone say what do you mean by um, homogeneous not typically similar how how homogeneous are phenotypically similar homogeneous means phenotypically similar okay phenotypically similar any other comment on homogeneous population sir the population belongs to a uh, same genus same genus okay mm -hmm. population to uh, same genus all right only two one is uh, the populations which are phenotypically similar and then the population which belongs to same genus okay so let me uh, stress here what uh, both guys told um, these are not the appropriate uh, definitions i'll just try to uh, describe what is your homogeneous population means so the actual uh, definition of homogeneous population is nothing but uh, the pop, uh, plants or populations which are genetically similar okay so whenever we see the term genetically similar it is nothing but your homogeneous okay so homo means similar and then genus here it is uh, not referring about the genus actually it is nothing but your genotype of the plant okay and then there is heterogeneous populations which is uh, nothing but uh, genetically dissimilar so let us understand um, with an example so for suppose there is a genotype aa and then there are six plants where all the plants have genotype aa aa so which population does it suits 
according to the definition so homogeneous population is nothing but your genetically similar population or similar plants and then now we have six plants where all the plants have the genotype homozygous capital a so which population does it suit sir homogeneous, homogeneous. which one just just among these two let us discuss the homozygous and heterozygous next among these two uh, under which they will fall homogeneous homogeneous population homogeneous population okay and then the same six plants okay into four and then uh, there is capital a and small a so this falls under so heterogeneous heterogeneous okay so whether the uh, physical or the phenotypic appearance of all these plants will differ or it will be same 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 even though they are same because of genetically dissimilarity because five plants have capital a capital a and then single plant has capital a and small a so because of this reason we are classifying it into the heterogeneous population so all the six plants have this hybrid combination heterozygous combination so under which classification they follow homogeneous homogeneous okay so homogeneous means genetically similar plants that's it heterogeneous means genetically dissimilar plants okay not in terms of your phenotype so this is wrong phenotypically similar no population with same genus no okay these are not appropriate to define the correct term is like genetically similar populations are your homogeneous populations and genetically dissimilar are your heterogeneous populations and then coming to your homozygous population and heterozygous population so how will you define them just don't say if the alleles are identical they are homozygous and then if identical if uh, alleles are not identical they are heterozygous so how you will define sir homozygous are made by self pollination Mm -hmm. and heterozygous so by cross pollination. Okay. So one is based on your uh, crossing patterns. One has a classified, and any other classification. So one description is based on crossing. Any other? okay so yeah, let us just put this aside and then see what uh, actually does the zygosity represents so wherever the population is not segregating okay those populations are known as your homozygous populations so non segregating populations and then the populations which segregate are your heterozygous populations so now comes the questions of uh, your uh, selfing or crossing so let us consider there is an um, genotype capital a capital a so if you go on selfing will it segregate no sir no sir so what will be your ultimate genotype for all the generations it will be capital a capital a capital a capital a right so these populations they fall under homozygous homozygous, homozygous populations and then there is a heterozygote okay so and then if you self and if we develop a population so will they segregate yes okay they will segregate into three different types of classes so the populations which segregate is nothing but your heterozygous populations and in the populations which won't segregate are your homozygous populations okay just remember uh, this this has been uh, described as your genetically similar populations the homozygous populations are genetically similar populations and then homozygous populations as the populations which won't segregate right is it okay yes sir so now tell me an example where a population is homozygous as well as homogeneous so pure line okay pure line so 
सो होमोजीनस प्लस होमोजाइगस ओनली प्योर लाइन एनी अदर एग्जाम्पल सो हाउ यू विल डेवलप ए प्योर लाइन इन ब्रिट्स ओके नेक्स्ट और इन ब्रिड ओके नाउ इट इज इजी सो टेल मी हाउ यू विल डेवलप ए प्योर लाइन प्योर लाइन इन विच continuous selfing sir okay you by continuous selfing you will develop a pure line so how you will develop an inbred selfing in cross pollinated crops yeah that is important so pure line is nothing but your continuous selfing in self pollinated and then selfing in your cross pollinated is your inbred so this represents to you self pollinated and this represents your cross pollinated so ultimately uh, if you go on selfing what you will attain you will attain homozygosity homozygosity so homozygosity which means they won't segregate and all the uh, genotypes they have uh, same genotype right all the plants whatever it might be right so what are the different uh, uh, possible conditions i have uh, just given three possible types so let us consider um, these three different uh, possible genotypes so pure line can be whether it can be small a small a capital a capital a or small a capital a what it can be what would be capital the genetic a, constitution a, of a pure line small a, small a. it can be small a small a or capital a capital a okay it can be small a small a or capital a capital a why it can't be capital a and small a it is heterozygous right so upon selfing you will never uh, find heterozygous ultimately you will find only the homozygous plant similar is the condition with your inbred and then coming to homogeneous plus heterozygous multi lines uh, read, read it properly i have said it homogeneous which is nothing but genetically similar plants heterozygous which is your segregating plant sir f1 hybrid okay so one is your hybrid okay hybrid it will always be heterozygous and hybrids all the hybrids that you develop from a particular cross since uh, they have the similar genotype so they are genetically similar so we classify them under the homogeneous populations so homogeneous and heterozygous populations are your hybrid so any other example or only hybrid sir so clone yeah clone what do you mean by clone so develop from a single mother plant okay true asexual reproduction yeah through asexually reproduced plants okay so this is where it comes clones okay clones are highly heterozygous in nature and then they have since they are heterozygous all the clones they will be falling under the homogeneous populations and now we will see heterogeneous population and homozygous populations together so heterogeneous and then homozygous so any examples heterogeneous which means uh, they are not genetically similar but they are homozygous this will be multi lines composite chain yeah. synthesis no how composites and synthetics will be homozygous composites and synthetics are developed by pure cross pollination so one most important example is your multi line yeah go ahead say
a multi line so multi lines are your breeding populations where all the lines are homozygous okay they will be homozygous but they differ for a single gene as a result of which they fall under the heterogeneous populations just remember this example once uh, if you uh, complete the breeding method classes you will um, get to know why it is a uh, classified under heterogeneous and homozygous populations okay it is just like let us consider this is the entire uh, genome of a plant so for one plant there is small a small a and for the other plant there is capital a capital a so where will you uh, put this group whether into the heterozygous populations or uh, homozygous populations there are two plants where the genome of the line which is indicated here both the genomes are very similar except for a single gene where for one gene there is homozygous recessive and then for the other gene it is homozygous dominant so these mm -hmm. fall under which one heterozygous or homozygous populations homozygous homozygous population and then when you classify them under homogeneous or heterogeneous where will you put it sir heterogeneous heterogeneous why heterogeneous because they are differing yes. genetically right yes sir okay so this is an uh, classical example where multi lines are the one which are homozygous in nature but they fall under the heterogeneous populations and the last one is your heterogeneous population and heterozygous both are from hetero so what will be your example synthetic variety which one synthetic variety yeah, synthetics and composites okay composites plus synthetics right so these fall into heterogeneous as well as your heterozygous population so among the composites and synthetics which one is reconstitutable and which one is not any idea any idea among these two uh, which can be reconstituted and then which can't be reconstituted composite sir okay now let it be but just remember synthetics are uh, um, reconstitutable okay why uh, whoever deals the breeding methods they will say you okay so up to now just remember um, these classifications and what are the uh, different populations which fall into these uh, different classifications okay so just by remembering uh, the simple definition you can just remember which uh, plants or which populations fall under thing so homozygous are the one which look genetically similar hetero okay sorry hetero homogeneous is the one which look genetically similar and heterogeneous is the one uh, which are genetically dissimilar and then homozygous populations which are not segregating and heterozygous populations which segregate so just based on these definitions you yourself can um, classify under um, where the hybrid falls where the synthetics falls okay where the inbred falls and then someone has a uh, uh, notably said that pure line selfing of a cross uh, pollinated crop is your inbred and then selfing of a self pollinated plant is your pure line okay so this completes your uh, both components of variance and then the breeding populations and there is one um, small concept so we all know there are different uh, breeding methods so different plant breeding methods so these different plant breeding methods these are uh, um, generally divided into three types one is your general method next is your special method and then next is your population improvement methods 
so do anyone have idea uh, which methods are um, under population improvement which one yeah recurrent selection is one method all the different uh, types of selections okay such as your disruptive selection recurrent selection and then die allele selection mating this is your disruptive selection and then uh, die allele selective mating and then recurrent selection these are the one which um, falls under the population improvement method and then all the simple uh, procedures such as your pure line breeding and then mass selection okay progeny selection bulk method pedigree method back cross method or your uh, heterosis breeding or hybrid breeding whatever you call so all these they generally classify under your general uh, breeding methods and then there are few uh, special methods can anyone name them mutation. other than which method mutation breeding okay one is your mutational breeding polyploidy breeding yeah polyploidy breeding is also and marker resistant yeah mass the transgenic transgenics okay so which require a uh, special skill okay all these methods are your special breeding methods so general methods special methods and then population improvement methods and there is one another classification so among the breeding methods which methods will involve the hybridization and which won't involve the hybridization Okay. So back cross. So back cross. What does it involve or it won't involve? Involve. Involve. Okay. Uh, I'll just say the method. You uh, classify them. So pure line. Uh, does it involve the hybridization? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So pure line. Uh, and then your inbred development. Mm -hmm. inbred it uh, does it involve hybridization no sir mm. and then your mutation breeding no sir okay and then your transgenic breeding no sir okay and then what about your bulk bulk method of breeding no sir huh yes sir involved so it involves your hybridization right bulk and then uh, how about your mass selection no sir okay and then bulk pedigree back cross okay and then um, heterosis breeding the population improvement breeding all these methods will involve the hybridization whereas your pure line breeding inbred breeding mass selection trans, uh, transgenic method mutational methods they won't uh, involve the hybridization okay so this is a brief introduction to different uh, uh, breeding methods right so among these breeding methods uh, if if you are given a cross pollinated crop which breeding method you generally pick if you are given with a cross pollinated crop recurrent selection okay recurrent selection you can also perform hybrid breeding you can go for population improvement okay wherever you will uh, have the scope for hybridization the cross pollinated uh, crops come into play so wherever um, there is no hybridization mostly the self pollinated crops are there where you will be seeing pure line breeding right mass selection everything yeah even in uh, self pollinated plants you can um, do the hybridization and then develop hybrids is this statement correct like even in self pollinated uh, crops heterosis can be exploited yes sir yeah, example yes sir
So are hybrids available in rice? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So tell me the name of the first hybrid then. Sir, first H4. hybrid. Hmm? H4, H4. No, I'm talking about rice hybrids. The first hybrid of rice. IR8. Mm. IR8 is first hybrid, okay. Mm -hmm. Just read about it, okay. Which is the first uh, hybrid in rice. And then someone has mentioned H4. Which crop hybrid is this? Cotton. Cotton. Who developed it? Uh, and parents, do you know the parents of this hybrid? Just read about it, okay? H4. From which university it has been released? What are the parents of this hybrid? Who developed it? Everything. Right? Okay. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, any other doubts in components of variants, breeding populations, and different methods of breeding? Any doubts in this class? What? What? Different pure lines can be called as multi lines. That is what your question is, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it is a mixture of pure lines, you can say. Hmm. Mixture of pure lines. Yes. Technically, you are right. Mixture of pure lines is your multi line. And any other query? Not only regarding this class, any other. So is it okay the components of variants, the breeding populations and then the different breeding methods? Yes, okay then. So, so what is the molecular mechanism of restoration of fertility in CGMS system, sir? Um, molecular mechanism. So now you won't need it, but I'll just explain you in simple terms. It is nothing but a uh, nuclear gene. So your restorer gene, where it is present? Nucleus. Yes, it is present in the nucleus. So what happens is uh, this gene product, it uh, exits the nucleus, it enters into the uh, cytoplasm and then it uh, um, corrects the uh, male sterility. Okay. This is in very brief terms. Okay, sir. Mm. For now, you won't need uh, how the molecular mechanism actually works. But this is how the fertility is being restored. Okay. Uh, that is your, whenever you uh, study more about it, you will clearly know uh, how it is affecting. Right. And then there are examples where single restorer gene is not uh, sufficient. You need two restorer genes so that uh, uh, complete uh, fertility restoration is seen. Okay. Up to now, just remember this, that the product of that gene exits nucleus, enters the cytoplasm, defects the uh, correction, and then the fertility is restored. Right? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Why mass selection does not produce hybrid? Someone... So, okay, uh, whenever... Uh, who? Um, First, you um, they will teach about the mass selection in um, breeding methods. Okay, then after teaching the mass selection, even if you have this doubt, I think did the mass selection concept completed? No. Okay. So once uh, if they teach the mass selection concept, and even if you are uh, with this doubt, then do ask your uh, particular mentor. Okay, he will tell you. Just by your uh, method, you will come to know why it does not produce hybrid. Okay. Okay. Any doubts um, um, pertaining to this class or whatever um, up to now it has been taught?
ओके देन आई एज्यूम योर साइलेंस एज नो डाउट्स सो साइनिंग ऑफ फॉर टुडे थैंक यू ऑल फॉर अटेंडिंग सर इसके भी या 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 सर आप जो कुछ भी स्क्रिबल किए ना सर जो कुछ भी लिखा है ना सर आप हां वो सब ऐसे ही सेव करके हमें नोट्स में भेज दीजिए सर सो यू वांट दीस एज नोट्स हां यस सर व्हाई बिकॉज़ हमें पिछले साल आप ऐसे ही विदाउट सेव किए थे सर वो हमें जरा सिंक होने में बहुत देर लगया सर इसलिए आप तो कह रहा हूं सर अच्छा पिछले साल भी है आप हां हां सर जी सर ओके ओके गुड गुड okay i'll try to tell to your uh, mentor who handles this okay and then but now here it is not clear na everything is like very rubbish okay sir parva ne sir hum kyunki ye class suna hai na sir hame zor thoda sa sync ho sakta hai sir isliye kya hai kya hai sir hame okay you koi baat nahi sir aap aise hi हां हां सर यही होना है सर ओके आई विल टेल हिम टू शेयर द रिटर्न थिंग ओके हाउएवर इट इज ओके देन सो एनी अदर क्वेरी सो आई एम गोइंग फास्ट और स्लो सर इट्स फाइन ओके इट्स मॉडरेट राइट यस okay so so even if uh, one anyone feels like i'm going fast or if anyone feels slow just tell me i'll try to adjust okay and then your feedback makes me uh, to deliver more right excuse me sir yeah sir can you please take the revision class of biometrical techniques biometrical techniques <laughs> who taught you biometrical techniques now so kavya ma'am what were the topics uh, dealt there which biometrical Sir, technique hmm yeah just say it was coefficient of variation and sir assessment of polygenic variability like d square statistics principal component analysis and those are not even in your uh, plan breeding syllabus you are just being taught that okay however uh, i'll go through them and then i'll uh, let you know okay okay sir. actual biometrical techniques are like your uh, hell into t dye allele mating okay. so that that was also okay okay so just remember the simple formulas and then where they are been used okay so if you are given a condition like male sterility which met, which technique you will use like i have uh, you have two options one is your dye allele next is your allele into t any idea yeah. okay i'll try to cover them okay And any other any other query how about your genetic classes finished what the hmm? population genetics okay population genetics aha uh-huh. it is not yet finished no sir okay uh, how much it has been covered so molecular and mendelian all no, covered no. in sir. population genetics But not yet started sir not yet started mm mm-hmm. फ्रीक्वेंसी gen frequency only those things and then one sim- uh, simple formula that's it and molecular genetics normal genetics everything got completed yes, yes sir okay so up to this it is fine and any other doubts in genetics and plant breeding or query excuse me sir yeah 
Sir, how this like uh, additive genetic variance is associated with the homozygosity? Uh huh. Go ahead. Genetic variance, additive yes, genetic sir. variance. How it is associated? Yes, sir. How it is? Uh, like... Yes, sir. Homozygosity. Uh, sim in simple terms, whenever there is heterozygosity, na, you will never find the average effect of a gene. The dominant gene it masks the recessive gene, right? Yes. Sir. So, what do you call this phenomenon? Dominance. Is it right? Whenever the dominant gene masks the recessive gene, it is your dominant. Dominance. Yeah. So heterozygous. So just by virtue of this. Simple example, you can say wherever, mostly, not wherever. So wherever there is heterozygosity, uh, it is associated with your dominant variance. And then uh, additive variance, it is mostly um, just opposite to this thing. It is associated with your homozygosity. Okay. Is this okay? Is this okay? Who was the one who were asking? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir, clear, sir. Yeah. Any other? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you just take the revision classes of selection in cross pollinated crop? Selection in cross pollinated. What were taught? Sir, uh, there are some methods. This you know, like rapid gain followed by slow response. Also slow progress for a long video. Slow response to selection. Which method? Which method? Tell again. I am not getting you. Sir, there are many, uh, many methods like gain, rapid gain followed by a slow response, also slow progress for a long period. Like that, there are many the methods. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they are still confused. Who taught you this? Kavya, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And any other? We want biometrical techniques. All these biometrical techniques and then what you are saying, the breeding methods in crops, pollinated crops. Uh, the most uh, important breeding methods in cross-pollinated crops are your heterosis breeding, followed by your uh, recurrent selection, development of synthetics, composites. These are important. I don't know who taught you all this rapid gain that these. Sir, that was under topic types of response to selection. Mm -hmm. Types of response to selection. Okay. I'll go through the content okay once what was uh, taught and then i'll see whether it is actually important to teach or uh, you are being just taught for extra okay and then genetics classes how are they okay yes who dealt the genetics classes Hari hmm. HBC. okay So who coined the term Alil? Bates. Mm -hmm. Genetics? Bates. Bates. Father of genetics? Rigor John. John Mendel. Mm -hmm. And then... So, do uh, splicing takes place in prokaryotes? Mm -hmm. Only in eukaryotes? Yes, sir. So, um, similar with capping and tailing? Only in eukaryotes. Okay. Who introduced the concept operon? Jacob and Miller. Jacob and Miller. Mm. In which organism? Equal. Equal. Mm. Equal. Which operon? Black operon. Mm. You're also been taught with tryptophan operon? Yes, sir. Mm. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, E. coli is your prokaryote. So, what about uh, the example of eukaryotic operon? Which operon you are being taught? Yes, no operon in eukaryote. East. East, okay. <laughs> Who introduced that concept? And who gave the verbal hypothesis? Greek. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are well versed with genetics then. Okay, then. So I hope now uh, you don't have any doubts in this Excuse concept. Me, sir. Yeah. Sir, there was one point under main features of split gene, sir. Mm hmm. Most interons of nuclear gene are blocked in all three reading frames. Most? Sir, I didn't... Most interons of nuclear genes are blocked in all three reading frames. Okay, I'll go through it. Most interons so... are blocked in three reading frames. Yeah. Oh, okay. In nuclear and... gene. Of nuclear genes. Hmm, yeah. It takes place in nuclear gene only. Okay. Any other? Sir, it was like continue with a reading frame is said to be blocked if it has a nonsense codon after a short distance. In this is a pertaining to operon. No, sir. It was under features of split gene. A split gene concept, okay. Hmm. Okay. And any other? Sir, where does polygenic male sterility happen? What, what? Polygenic male sterility? Yes, sir. Polygenic male sterility? Sir, it was written, uh, a point was there. That uh, it could be controlled by a single gene or many genes. Mm, there might be a condition where uh, male sterility is gone by more genes. Okay. So, what is your doubt regarding that? So like in which plant it occurs? In which plant? Yes. Um, there are many examples. Even in rice, uh, there are genes like TMS1, TMS5. Okay. Both together will um, affect your sterility. So even I discussed yesterday, right? Not only uh, TGMS as well as PGMS, sometimes both together uh, will cause the male sterility, okay? Both together. The genes which are affecting your um, temperature as well as your photo period are responsible for the male sterility, okay? Okay, and I forgot to tell you about uh, the CHA, na? chemically hybridizing agents. Yes. So, you know uh, how they work, like just by spraying, they will uh, make the pollen non-functional or they won't make the anther to open, okay? There are like very, um, it is very simple concept, just uh, read it in the breeding book. There are three different generations of uh, CHA, these are also known as your male gametocytes, first generation, second generation, and third generation. And what are the futures of the ideal CHAs? Okay. Uh, it's just your uh, memory based concept. Just read it and then memorize it. That is That will help you a lot. And then uh, you should also know about what are the first hybrids in different crops. Okay, in India mostly. Um, who was the breeder behind it and which university has uh, released them. All this will help you. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. So, and then any other query?
okay then if no thank you all uh, for attending this session and hope you are understanding and then you are uh, connecting with my flow thank you all thank you sir thank you sir